Hi, it's Gary with Successful Gardens, and today we're going to be talking about amaryllis bulbs. And I'm going to walk you through three different ways of planting your amaryllis bulbs so that they might be blooming for the holidays, including the ones that you had from last year. Now, year after year, you might collect the amaryllis bulbs, and the sad thing is a lot of people will just throw those amaryllis bulbs away. But as you can see over my shoulder here, these are amaryllis plants from years past. In fact, I, I have, I, I counted the bulbs I had and I had 18 different amaryllis bulbs um, that I get blooming every year. And as you can see, all the leaves have dried. I put amaryllis bulbs through a drying dormancy for about two months. I stopped watering these plants about the 1st of September. And so here it is, the first part of November. And so they've gone about two months, um, no water. Um, the leaves died, putting all of that stored energy back down into the bulb. All of the emeralds that I have, this year I'm going to prepare the bulbs, but I'm going to take this existing soil that I've had in those in these pots and discard them. I'm going to change them all out this year. I'm going to be inspecting the roots and the health of the bulb and then planting them in new potting soil. Now what I'm doing here is breaking up the roots, getting rid of the old potting soil. Now, what, how, why I'm getting rid of the old potting soil is over the years as you fertilize them um, the potting soil can be become saturated or, or heavy in salts that don't get flushed through with with excess watering and so sometimes that can that potting soil just needs to be thrown away now I won't throw this potting soil actually in the garbage I will throw it out into my flower beds and then that way I can incorporate it into my flower beds outside but as I prepare this this bulb I'm taking off the outer tunic layers of or paper layers of the previous sheaths as I've loosened up the the roots you can see that some are excessively long um, and that's fine, um, but the overall health of this bulb, even though it's small, it is still nice and healthy. These roots are are beautiful. Um, they're going to take root and take hold in the, in the new potting soil. Now, I can trim these. Don't tell my wife, but I have a pair of, of scissors over here that I, I keep with my plants. But I'm just going to trim some of those roots off, those long ones but leaving these healthy roots for this plant. Um, you can see the new growth already starting to emerge, so this, this bulb is, is ready to go. I will just go ahead and continue on with 18 other bulbs in preparing them. But one of the things I found by pulling all of the, um, the, the amaryllis bulbs out of the pots is I found a whole bunch of babies. Um, yes, bulbs can make baby bulbs. And so these are bonuses. They're, um, as I separated those roots, and, and separated the bulbs out of the out of the soil um, these were all baby bulbs that had started growing next to the mother bulb and so I just got an additional um, seven bulbs and so this is going to be fun to watch them grow now one or two of these might actually be big enough to produce a small flower I'm sure it will be a, just a single stock um, this year but but they are they look to be healthy enough that they might produce 
flowers this year. If not, um, I'll just keep them growing uh, for the next couple of years until they they produce a a, um, a, a new flower um, off of this bulb. So I'll plant those in a separate pot. But one of the other things I found, um, I did run across one bulb that I had I have suspicions about. Um, this is why it's important to inspect your bulbs every once in a while. Um, as I looked at, at these, these roots, there's some, I can see some deterioration or some rotting on the roots. And then as I opened up, um, peeled off that tunic layer, um, I noticed that the bulb is a little soft in a couple of spots. But as I look down into the crown, um, there's some rotting that is going on. Um, I'm still going to plant this bulb, but I'm going to make sure I, um, I mark it so I can, can watch the development on this. And it might be to where it will outgrow it, or that, um, that problem with the rotting might continue and actually cause the whole bulb to, to fail. So I will isolate this. Now, because I've mixed all these bulbs, I'm not going to know what they are. And that's going to be the surprise or the, or the fun about watching these bulbs bloom um, in the coming months. But now I'm going to, to soak those, those bulbs in water. I'm just going to add the water and let them soak in that water for, for a couple of hours. All right, the bulbs have been soaking and the roots are hydrating. And so now we're going to pot these up in, in various um, pots and planters. And so I'm going to turn the camera away from me and so you can see everything that I'm doing as I narrate it. As I get the bulbs from the water, you can, um, you can see how um, the roots have, have plumped up some. They're nice and, and firm. They're mostly opaque in color. And so still nice and healthy. The bulb is in good condition. Um, so th these are going to be exciting bulbs. Um, so now as I take a pot Fill it full of soil. The rule of thumb for amaryllis bulbs is that you don't want, it can basically sit on the soil, but you, to have some anchoring aspect to it, you, you want the bulb to sit maybe a third, but no more than a half of the bulb into the soil. And so as I plant this in, in this pot. I'm going to make a little divot in the, in the soil. Get those roots down to where they can anchor in. Now I've taken the potting soil and pre-moistened it. So it will, by doing that, that will, will settle. Um, it'll be, I can firmly pack that around that and getting it to the desired level. And then once I get all of these potted up, then I will water them in more. So here we go, a planting. All right, now with, I've got all of the, the bulbs planted up. Oh, minus one, um, except for those special ones that, um, that I had ordered from White Flower Farm, um, Capri and Fantasy. Um, so this is a, um, about a 
14 inch basket. I have a plastic liner inside of it. It's approximately four inches deep of, with soil. So there again, I'm gonna just take the bulbs and push them down into the soil. Um, and just make sure that that soil is snug up against the bulb about a third of the way. Now one of the things, nice things about having this basket is, is this loop. Um, in the years past, I've had these, um, the flower stalks will get um, about 18 to 24 inches tall. And, and so by having this hoop on it um, allows me to have support um, for those stalks. So it's, I, I kind of, it's kind of fun. It's a, a nice little decorative um, aspect to the pot, to the flowery. When they come into bloom, um, I can cover the soil with um, Spanish moss, um, and and so that it's not ex fully exposed. The dirt is exposed, but it would make a nice nice centerpiece by having some of that Spanish moss covering up the bulbs um, for the decorative aspect of it. So now that I have all the bulbs planted, um, I'm just going to give them a, a good watering. So now I've taken last year's bulbs, well, several last year's bulbs, and planted them up. They're going to start growing, and I'll get them to rebloom and enjoy those bulbs and those flowers for another, another year. Another way that you might receive an amaryllis bulb is as a gift, a prepackaged one. They used to come in boxes, now they're coming in decorative pots. Um, often a, a great teacher's Christmas gift. Um, I know many of teachers who have called me up and says, I've got this bulb, now what do I do with it? And so, well, the easiest thing to do is to follow the instructions. Um, like on this, this particular one, this is a white double amaryllis. Um, this one's called Marquis. Um, beautiful flower. I have one of these. Um, I've had one in, in the past. Um, but the, instead of a single bloom, it's a double bloom. And so it's just nice, beautiful corsage, uh, multi-layers of, of petals. And so just absolutely gorgeous in a pure white form. And so, but as it says right here on the instructions, it says, or on the front label, it says, just add water and enjoy. You can see that the, there's a tunic or the, that protective outer layering um, to this bulb. And so, but some good roots. So this is actually um, ready, as the label says, ready to plant. But you want to make sure that you lift that bulb up out of the out of the soil, so it's sitting on top of that soil. Then take your water and just add the water to that potting soil. Now, because that was dry potting soil, it's going to take a lot more water. Um, to absorb in and to saturate all of that potting soil. Um, at this point, I usually will just let it sit there for, you know, 20 minutes, check it, um, add some more water to it. Um, but as that flower stalk grows, you know, some amaryllis will only give, will show, will grow on short stalks, uh, maybe 12 inches, some will grow 18 inches and then 24. And there might even be some varieties out there that could get up to 36 inches and that's a lot of of stem um, to be supported by a bulb and usually sometimes those flowers and those bulbs will will tip over so and you might need to support or add a stake um, to that pot to as the as the stock flower stock grows you can tie that off and, and give it the support that it needs and so then it won't flop over the worst feeling is that you might experience in, in growing amaryllis bulbs is to come home and find uh, one of your blooms, blooming amaryllis is tipped over and on the floor while the potting soil off. It's just a, a, a sickening um, feeling to, to, to see that and I have experienced that feeling so that's why you want it's always important to add a stake when you need to give support to a flower. All right so let me show you one more method of planting 
bulbs um, or an amaryllis bulb. As I got this in the mail, um, I was actually disappointed in the size. I was expecting a, a little bigger bulb. So I was going to plant it um, in, in water. This is a decorative pot. It had, has a, a large neck to it, but where the bulb would sit above the, above the water line. Well, this bulb actually slips all the way down through that neck, so I don't want that bulb. But with this, I, I have this vase that has a narrow neck to it. And so this bulb will be able to sit right on top of, um, in that neck, and on top of those marbles. And, and with doing that, I will just add water to that, filling the water to the bottom of the bulb, to where the roots are, and not much higher. So you, I brought that water up to the bulb level. And with that, the roots will start to grow and they'll go in and fill in around those marbles. But there's a, a decorative vase for that um, with, with that. Now, as that bulb sits in there, I can already see two flower stalks um, appearing in this bulb. That's what's actually growing. There's the, the first one and the second one. Now, this variety is called Glee. Um, it is a variegated um, a white flower with pink um, accents to a variegation throughout those leaves. And so it's a, a, a multicolor um, flower blossom. But, but it will sit there. Those roots will stabilize it. This, this neck will also help stabilize that bulb as, as it starts to grow. But this is one I'll definitely want to, to watch and make sure that it doesn't tip over. But it, this is a fun way to display your amaryllis bulbs um, for, for the holidays. Amaryllis are truly a holiday flower. Um, they're, they're fun, they're beautiful, they add a lot of excitement and color around the holidays but they don't always bloom in time for the holidays i've had um, amaryllis bulbs bloom all the way um january and february one year i had some extend that were late bloomers and that bloomed all the way into march um, but i truly love and that's why i can't seem to throw a bulb of amaryllis bulb away i grow them year round I'm Gary with Successful Gardens. Please consider subscribing to this channel um, as you go along with me with a journey on, on gardening, both indoors and outdoors. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. And remember, let's get growing.